the day we're taking a look at these NBA matches, which are happening on Sunday, December 11, 2022, and giving you match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes. Before we dive into our video, don't forget to subscribe and push that notification bell to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos. Also, check out our perks and join the High Stakes membership. Joining the High Stakes membership is easy, is cheap, but it will help a lot in the growth process of this channel. Plus if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you, by becoming a member of the High Stakes Patreon, you will have access to our best team picks, total picks, parlay picks and much more. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting predictions that ends up costing you a lot of time and money. Join the High Stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Going back to our video we will give you two betting picks for each game, a team pick and a total pick based on facts and detailed explanation. One more thing before we start, check out our new channel High Stakes Props and Parlays, where you can find our player props and parlay picks predictions, you will find the link in the description and comment section below. And make sure to watch our videos till the end, so you don't miss any of our picks. Philadelphia 76ers vs Charlotte Hornets. The late stages of the Lakers game should serve as a wacky call for the Sixers, as they nearly coughed up a double-digit lead. Harden is slowly rounding back into form after a multi-week absence and looked much sharper in playing 47 minutes and scoring 28 points against La. The Sixers' strength on the perimeter should be a problem for a Hornets team that is missing several key perimeter players due to injury. With that in mind, this one could get ugly early as the Sixers flex their perimeter advantage and bury three-pointers against the Hornets. Once Harden and company extend the floor, Embiid should dominate the paint against the game, but undersized Mason Plumlee. Look for a Sixers route in this one. Take Philadelphia minus 10.5 points. Entering this home game against Charlotte, the 76ers rank 27th in pace of play. Joe Lembiad has a lot to do with that figure, and although the return of James Harden gives them a lot more options offensively, this team will go through Embiid every night. He had 38 points and 12 rebounds against the Lakers Friday, and will duplicate that effort here, considering the Hornets have nobody to slow him down. Philadelphia will control the tempo here for the most part, and that means a lot of missed threes from Charlotte with zero second chance opportunities. Take the under with confidence. Orlando Magic vs Toronto Raptors. The Raptors are spending the weekend in the happiest place on earth, or at least need it, in Orlando. But they do have business to take care of while in Orlando, as they play a two-game set with the Magic. They may have been distracted on Friday night as they lost 113-109 as an 8-point favorite. The loss dropped them to 13-13 on the season, 9th in the conference, 8 games behind the first-place Boston Celtics. When discussing the Orlando Magic, the caveat is always, this is a young team with lots of potential. At some point, this young talent will start to gel and win some basketball games. They are 7-20 on the season and have the second worst record in the NBA, but they have won two in a row, so you wonder, are they going to start to click? We'll see. But as for now, they scored an impressive win over the Raptors on Friday night 113-109. The Magic snuck up on the Raptors Friday night, as the Raptors had just played a big game against the Lakers, a win, at home on Wednesday night. They probably traveled to Orlando thinking, easy win, but then they walked away with the loss. The Raptors have been consistently inconsistently this year, as they win one, then lose one, win one then lose one. It shows in their 13-13 record. So, they should wake up here and win this one after losing Friday. Orlando had to shoot lights out, and then still barely just one, but I don't see that happening again. With a day of rest and no travel, Toronto will lock in and take care of business. Take the Raptors here to cover. The Toronto Raptors have been a decent team this season, as small forward OG Anunoby has to lead the team at this point. He is questionable for this game with left hip soreness, but if he is able to play, it will be a big boost to the team. So far this season he is averaging 19 points, 5.8 rebounds, 2.1 assists, 0.8 blocks, and 2.4 steals in 36.7 minutes per game. 
His shooting percentages have been where you'd want to see as he is shooting 47.5% from the floor, 33.1% from three-point range, and 83.3% from the free throw line. In his last game against this Magic team, he played 44 minutes and finished with 12 points, 8 rebounds, 2 assists, and an outstanding 5 steals in a losing effort. Rookie power forward Paolo Banchero has been leading the charge for the Orlando Magic this season and is looking to continue his solid output. He is playing 34.8 minutes per game and is averaging 21.9 points, 6.7 rebounds, 3.7 assists, 0.8 steals, and 0.6 blocks thus far. He has room for improvement to shoot the ball, as he is shooting 45.6% from the field, 24.3% from beyond the arc, and 75.1% from the charity stripe. In his last game against these Raptors he finished with 23 points, 6 rebounds, 4 assists, 1 block, and 3 turnovers in 38 minutes of action. When two teams have just seen exactly what the opposition can throw at them, it is going to be more difficult to score points. Both of these teams are more lethargic offensively, as Toronto currently ranks 20th in the sport, with 98.7 possessions per 48 minutes, while Orlando is 25th in basketball, with 98.2 possessions per 48 minutes. The under has hit in 17 of the last 22 games against one another inside of the Amway Center, so go with under 222.5 points in this game as well. Atlanta Hawks vs Chicago Bulls Saturday's games have been excluded from the analysis, and the 10-14 Chicago Bulls hosted the Dallas Mavericks as two-point favorites, searching for their second straight victory. Last Wednesday, the Bulls stopped a three-game slide with a 115-111 home victory against the Washington Wizards. They failed to cover a five-point spread in what was a tight battle for all 48 minutes. The Bulls made 50.0% of their field goals against Washington and went 10-4-23 from beyond the arc. They handed out 29 assists and committed 19 turnovers but struggled to defend, allowing a thumping 60 points in the paint. Demer Derozan led the way for Chicago with 27 points, including 15 in the fourth quarter, while Zach Lavin and Nikola Vucevic accounted for 25 points apiece. Vucevic also had 11 rebounds and made three of his five attempts from downtown. The Hawks will be quite shorthanded if DeAnder Hunter remains on the shelf. They already missed Dejant Murray, 20.8 ppg, 6.2 apg, and John Collins, 12.3 ppg, 7.5 rpg, a lot, so I'm going with the Bulls to cover, even though Chicago will have to deal with fatigue on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. The Bulls look like they have more offensive firepower than the Hawks at the moment, and Demer Derozan is poised for another strong performance. Darazin averaged 28.5 points and 7.3 assists through four games against Atlanta in 2021-22. Atlanta is 4-8 at TS in its last 12 games overall, and 2-4 at TS in its previous six outings on the home court. On the other side, Chicago has covered just once in its last five showings on the road. Take the Chicago Bulls ATS Chicago sits a number 12 in the East through 24 games, averaging 111.7 points per contest, number 16. The Bulls have the sixth worst defensive rating in the league, 109.4, but fortunately it's the defense that carries most of the Windy City's load. Chicago is ranked number 7 in defensive rating, 110.8, with the 10th most blocks per game, 5.1, 9th most steals per game, 7.7, 4th best opponent turnover percentage, 16.1, and fewest opponent second chance points per game, 11. The Bulls also average the third most points off turnovers per game at 20. Atlanta now ranks number 7 in the East after losing three straight games against the Thunder, Knicks and Nets. The Hawks average middle of the pack with 113.2 points per game, number 14, and sit in the bottom third in terms of offensive rating, 110.4. Part of the issue is that Atlanta has the second worst three-point percentage, 31.8, and the fifth fewest free throw attempts, 21.2, so they're struggling both inside and out, while also giving up the sixth most points in the paint, 52.5, Chicago, 111.7 ppg and Atlanta, 113.2 ppg, are both average in terms of scoring production, but both also play a top 10 paces, Kai number 8, 101.52, ATL number 9, 101.49. 
given the Bulls will be fatigued and Atlanta takes care of the ball better than most teams, I'm not counting on this Chicago defense to hold Young and the Hawks in check. I think this will almost certainly be a high-scoring affair. Atlanta has scored 114 points or more in six of the last 10 games, and Chicago has done so in five of its last 10 games. Each of Atlanta's last three covers have gone over the total as well. Take the over 227.5 points.